Hello, today Electropages is here in Austin, Texas, and we're at Embedded World, and we're currently with the Solid Sand Stand, bit of a mouthful, Solid Sand Stand, and I believe we saw you guys about two years ago at Embedded World. So what I'd like to say is thank you for having us today. Yeah, thank you for being here. Pleasure to meet you. Fantastic. Nice so before we get into the details of what you guys are doing and what you're showing off today, just tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. As a person? Yes. So I'm Remy. I'm a qualification lead at Solid Sands, uh, responsible for supporting our customers using our products or uh, helping them with services that we provide. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm in Amsterdam. Uh, we are an Amsterdam-based company. I was born and raised there. What I like to do in my free time is watching the football club of Amsterdam, Ajax, and uh, going oh, to concerts. Fantastic. So. You guys are all about specifications, testing, uh, and I believe that's in sort of the realm of, of like compilers. Is that correct? Yeah, compilers and also standard library implementations. So wherever it's an implementation of C or C++ mm. as a language or as the library, because they are both standardized as the language and the library together, that's where we come in and we verify implementations. Right. So I suppose my first question to you then is, in so, so when you have these, uh, these testing uh, standards, what is it that you're actually doing? What is it you're trying to sort of uh, uh, essentially test in that in a way? What is it that's going on? Well, first of all, we interpret the standards. So C and C++ are very nicely ISO standardized languages. Right. So we start at the standards, we look what's written there, and we make sure we write the proper test cases to verify that anyone who claims to implement C or C++ in their tool chain, in their library, that's correctly implemented. Ooh, so, so uh, okay, so I, I, I guess that you'll tend to uh, come into play when you have like a semiconductor company who develops a new chip, yep. creates a compiler for it, and says this thing supports C++11 or whatever it is, and then you guys, you guys step in and go, well, let's make sure that's the case. Exactly, yeah, so the, that's the, the foundation of what we do. We make sure that the uh, language is properly implemented from the standards perspective, so that's more the conformance side of things, mm. but we definitely go far beyond that because there are parts of the compilers we know are extra important, for example, optimization. It's a very big part of a compiler nowadays to make Absolutely. code run more efficiently. There's nothing about it in the standards apart from saying you can optimize as long as the behavior that's observable mm. remains the same. So that actually allows a lot of freedom and you need to make sure that's also properly implemented. And especially nowadays, large part of compiler implementations are related to optimization, and we make sure also those parts are properly verified. And I think that freedom you were mentioning must give you a bit of a headache at times, because as you say, people will do all kinds of tricks to, to try and Absolutely. cut down the memory and the, and the speed of their programs, but that can then introduce issues. Absolutely, yeah. But in the end, it then comes down to what does the language require, right? So we still verify that what's the outside, what's the code looking like, that when it's actually being executed, it still behaves like that. So that always remains the foundation, I would say. We have this language specification that says what a loop should do or something like that. Yeah. But of course, we know what kind of tricks are common to be done to rewrite a loop to be more efficient. Yeah. And that's where we target compilers, put them through their paces and make sure that even in the more tricky scenarios, we make sure we have a proper test case that verifies rightly done. So let's say I uh, let's say you have a customer who's developing their own compiler for their for their uh, chip. Um, is it, it do you, can you guys give advice uh, and, and help them with the creation of that compiler, or is it or is that something you're going to be a bit more hesitant on? Like like we'll test the compiler, but we're not going to sort of like write it for you essentially. Well, I think it's an interesting part of uh, of our product super test is uh, the so-called code generator trainer that we have. That's like a level-based structure of a test suite that we help to guide people implement a new backend for a compiler. Yeah. So let's say you already have the front end, GC or LVM, uh, and you're developing this back end. Then step by step on a level basis, we add more functionality to the tests, yeah. such that also on that step by step basis, the backend can be implemented. So I think that's a very nice way to guide development of a, yes. of a compiler. And once you have passed these stages, these it's levels. Like a, it's like a back and forth, isn't it? So, so, so does that mean that you kind of like you, would you be with the developer during the development of their tool from the from day one, essentially? Uh, not as a person, but as a product for oh, sure. As a product, so, yes, yeah, a product. so super test <laughs> is really there from the start. You go by these levels for the fundamentals yeah. of the compiler, and once you pass those, then full super test comes in with the thousands of test cases to also consider all the edge cases, all the implementation details of the language, etc. So over time, do you guys? continue to add your own, to, to add new tests, because I imagine there's going to be more and more issues that come up. So one, one, one example I can think of is like in terms of how sort of things can slip through. Take for example, like I think it was Harpy. Do you know when the SSL um, uh, uh, algorithm, yeah, it, it, it had the error whereby you could over, overflow a buffer. 
So no one really knew that for years until yeah. eventually someone found it. So and then someone patches it. So in your case, would you do you continue to discover new edge cases that you have to then account for? Absolutely, yeah. I think our test suite is evolving uh, both in depth and in breadth because new versions of C and C++ come out. So then of course we have to add test cases for these new features, but also for C90 we sometimes find edge cases that are interesting to include in the test suite. And then why not include them? You always Absolutely. want to test as much as you can. Absolutely. It never ends. Testing never ends. So also development of a test suite. Even though the basis obviously is very solid, there's always more to be adding there. So, uh, so C++ is talked a lot about, but I think I saw behind me something about Python. Am I correct about that? Yeah, Python is more the side of, of our uh, test driver and tools that come with SuperTest. So configuring something like a test driver is more efficient in a scripting language like Python. Oh, I see. Yeah. So that's where Python comes in. Uh, so, so, and so your focus is things like C and C++, the two big languages in the field of semiconductors and microcontrollers. Absolutely, yeah. So in the, from the start, the main focus we had was compilers for sure, the language implementations. Uh, but over the last years, we are more and more focused on the standard libraries of C and C++ as well especially when you look at uh, safety critical software development. So our test suites have always been very strong at verifying the standard libraries of Ooh. C and C++ as well, but there was still quite some room mm. to uh, um, support safety critical uh, qualification yeah, of the libraries as and well. And that's, that's really important because I, I so, so as an engineer, I've done loads, I've done loads of coding on microcontrollers, yeah. but it never really occurred to me that if you're designing, let's say, an automotive system, you use an automotive graded part, but the software should also be automotive exactly. grade as well. And, so, yeah. and that includes the compiler. So how does that work in that situation? How would an automotive engineer know that their, their, their compiler is rated for that application? That's a very good question. So, of course, safety critical standards, they require you to qualify a compiler. So in the end, you will always run into this requirement. And how we support them is then by running through our test suites, providing mm. full traceability between our test cases and what is written in the specification of the C and C++ languages. And that's typically the way that the functional safety standards require you to qualify a tool mm. to show exactly what is the specification of the tool and how do you verify that the tool correctly implements that? Well, that's exactly what SuperTest provides. So you'll, you'll have customers who are developing their own compiler and you will test those compilers. Do you also have customers who want to use a compiler that either they can't develop or is no longer used, but they want to get it tested to, to see if it's still okay? Yeah. Is that something you can do as well? Yeah, we have many customers in automotive, railway, industrial automation, robotics, uh, who are purely using compilers. They are not developing them but they need to make sure they are compliant to functional safety and standards. And so those people aren't even going to trust what their own compiler sort of claims. Like, this is a perfectly safe thing. And if you're a, an automotive manufacturer, you might go, actually, I think I'd rather take it to solid sands to make sure that it is actually exactly. what it claims. Yeah, so that's what we do for the compiler, but now also for standard libraries, because of course, standard libraries are also dependencies you have in your software. Yeah. You don't know if that's properly implemented without actually testing it, right? Oh, of course. And that's where we come in, where we provide the requirements-based testing that can be used to qualify to the level of safety-critical software development as well. And, and you mentioned the standard library, so I'm thinking like STDIO or that kind of thing. That's your right. Yeah, you're standing with printf and all this kind of thing. So, but, but what about if you have like a custom library? Let's say I wrote something because I'm working on a vehicle and I wrote my own custom library. Mm -hmm. Is that something you could also help with as well? We then uh, help primarily in the case of when that library depends on the standard library as well. I see. Or so when the library sure the, needs to be compiled. You're making sure the core compiler, the core library is absolutely solid. Exactly. Solid sand. So, <laughs> there we go. So that anything built on top of it is absolutely, it, it's like a strong foundation. So yeah. that your libraries are probably going to be okay because the bottom ones that you've relied on are absolutely exactly. spot on. Yeah. Um, so, so what would you say are the biggest challenges or the biggest pitfalls that you see in those who are designing compilers? What would you say is the, the thing that tends to have go wrong the most? Go wrong? I'm not sure, but for the challenges, I think it's keeping up with the latest standard developments because especially with C++, their feature set is going to explode. And we see even nowadays that not all latest for, uh, features in C++20 or C++23, which is right around the corner. I think I'm still on 11, are, so. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm still so on that's 11. a big challenge. It's a challenge of, on one hand, extending the functionality. On the other hand, stay backward compatible with older versions of C++ as well. Because as you said, we're in automotive. There is long running projects going on there. And many people are still relying on old versions of C and C++. Yeah. And also there you need to make sure you stay compliant, you stay uh, at, at the right implementation of the language, even though later versions of the language may change things, people may still rely on the Ooh. older version of the language. Well, that's a good point, because if you upgrade your software, so let's say you move from C11 to C20, 
you might find that it's, it, like you say, it's got enough differences that actually the same code won't quite run in the same way. Exactly. And so, and so customers will then come back to you and say, can you please test this software? Yep. Make sure it's going to work properly. Now, um, another question I've got. Are you, uh, uh, can you tell us what kind of, who, who, who are some of your customers or is this one of those things where we have to kind of keep it under, the, under wraps? Is that something you can tell us? Like your, any major clients of yours? Yeah, I think we can mention some clients because we, we promote them on the, on the booth as well. Oh, so. well, there you go, perfect, <laughs> right. So, give us, a, so give, us a, give us a few examples of like major clients that you, know, you guys work with. On the side of the semiconductors and the, the tool developers, it's, it's for example, Wind River, uh, Synopsis and ARM that we work with. Oh, uh, Synapse is an arm. Okay, yeah. that's great to know, yeah. And on the side of uh, developers of stage critical software, you can think of uh, KUKA in uh, mm. industrial automation, uh, Robert Bosch in automotive, mm. uh, and in railway, we have Hitachi, for example. So there's a quite nice uh, range of customers that we have across these industries that uh, rely but, on us. But, but to be crystal clear, it's not just the compiler designers who can use you, it's those who just want to use one and want to make sure that like you say, you can give them that verification, say yes, that's going to be safe in your application, and then they can go ahead and make their code and, and essentially know, in, in, it's safe in their knowledge that they know that it's going to be okay. Exactly, yeah, they, they have to do this to be compliant to functional safety standards like ISO 26262. So we make sure that we unblock them on this part, and no matter which compiler they use, as long as it's your C++ compiler, we make sure it's qualified and safe to be used. And it does not mean the compiler is perfect, uh, no but, compiler is perfect, but, but we make them have, aware of the flaws. You have done enough tests to really make sure that the most the most terrible errors have been essentially solved and not, or certainly not in the thing. So you, you still might find an edge case that no one's ever discovered before. Absolutely. And, and that's why you have to keep creating new tests and new systems. But by doing the major tests that you've done, you, the chances of that edge case are quite slim. So, and again, that means it's easier to qualify for safety uh, legislation and tests and stuff like that. Um, so when someone does create a compiler using your, uh, uh, when someone does create a compiler and you've tested it with your with your uh, system, is it is there some kind of certification or, or stamp or some kind of seal of approval as you would that you can apply to that compiler? Yeah, I think so. So of course, when you qualify the compiler with SuperTest, you have the evidence that it's qualified. Mm -hmm. And the next step then typically is go to an independent safety assessor yeah. that will actually certify it. So that's I, what I, I can't, I, that, that kind of feels like that, that kind of feels like that would be used in CE testing at some point. It's depending on the product, I imagine, or is, would that not be the case? So when you look at compilers, it's really dependent on on the use case, and so that's that how do you configure it? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I suppose I don't think CE applies to automotive, for example. It would be a completely different set of standards, wouldn't it? It's more compliance to the functional safety standards, so ISO two six two six two in automotive. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh right. So when you want to qualify for the ISO standards and get your ISO certification, yeah, that's when that comes exactly. out. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, I do have a question about different languages because one thing I am seeing is there's definitely a, there's definitely a shift in the field of electronic engineering when it comes to firmware development to use different languages like MicroPython. I think some people may be trying Rust. Uh, I'm trying to think of other ones people might be looking at. But how how do you foresee that as being? Do you think that's something you might you, you might be looking into to, to do functional testing for? Because if things like MicroPython do become really popular, then maybe clients out there who want to test to make sure that the, the MicroPython implementation is uh, safe. Yeah, especially actually the, the other example you gave, Russ, is something we, we hear a lot. Yeah. Uh, so we're definitely monitoring that. But yeah, like we discussed before, we are really at the foundation. So what our testing is based on is standard. Yeah. And right now there's no formal standard or specification of Rust, it's more the Rust reference. There is a working group that's working on a it's proper a bit, it's specification. It's a little bit cowboy, it's a bit cowboy at the moment, isn't it? It's sort of like Wild West, I think. Yeah, yeah a little bit, come, yeah. a little bit. But just, there's definitely a movement yeah. toward uh, a specification, and that's what we're monitoring. And once that's there, it's definitely something we uh, might consider testing as well. But having, think, having said that, I suspect though that the Rust compiler itself would probably have been written in something like C. And so then you could test the C standard that it was written with. So at least you know that the compiler that wrote the compiler was correct to those standards and yeah. at least add some kind of some kind of evidence. Yeah, to be honest, I think that the crazy thing of a compiler development is that you develop it in the language you're actually developing the compiler with. So I think this compiler in this case is developed in Rust. Wait, what? You mean Rust develops Rust? Yeah, that's what? how it works. If you start with a simple compiler and you add more features, then you can develop the compiler with the language it's compiling. It's how, a, can, how can Rust develop Rust? It's a crazy concept, right? But if you have a basic set of features you support, you can slowly increment it with more. Having said that, you can make an assembler with assembler. So I suppose. There you go. Oh, that is 
Oh, that is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's very, that is very weird. Okay, so apparently Rust is made with Rust. So, okay, fair enough. But I have a good point about Rust and C and that is yeah. interoperability, I think. Because yeah. nowadays, people are not moving from a C system to a Rust-only system. They are going yeah, to have components that communicate together. Yeah. And that's definitely one of the first steps we are considering taking to make sure that Rust and C can talk Absolutely. together and it works together, and that's Absolutely. definitely something interesting to, uh, to look into. Now, sort of looking into, into like the future, the next 10 years, where do you see Solid Sands going? What is it that you see you guys sort of developing and going into? I think it's definitely uh, our core business remains C and C++, especially with C++. We currently have strong developments in the standard library qualification. Yep. So we are adding more and more uh, headers in the standard library to be supported that can be qualified for use in safety critical software development. And over the next coming years, I think on that side, there will definitely be a lot more headers and, to be supported. And that's because the, the, every release of, of C or C++ is introducing new standards, and, and uh, as in like new libraries in the standard, yeah. which means you have to keep on trying to find all the errors that may come out from there. Exactly, and of course, develop the tests to actually verify they do the right thing. Oh, because yeah. in the end, yeah, the evidence that everything is, doing, is going right is even more important than finding the bugs, because you need to have this confidence that it's safe. Fantastic. Well, I've only got one more question for you, which is that for the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get in touch with Solid Sands, whether it's to check a compiler or make their own compiler and get it uh, safety certified, what would you recommend that they do? I would recommend them to go to our website. There's a lot of information on solidsands.nl uh, about our products, our services, and of course, they can get in contact there as well. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking Thank the time. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.